Francis Schaeffer uh, wrote a book called God Who Is There and Is Not Silent. He said, our words have turned into connotation words. And one of the words of great connotation is the word faith. It does not mean what it used to mean. In fact, it is a word of emptiness. It does not have much substance. So it's easy for people even in this country to speak of their faith. But if your faith is not large enough to challenge the faith of the state, indeed to challenge even the foundation of law which the state claims to defend, then your faith will not challenge the state or its laws. And that's why when it comes to a conclusion of this matter, you see people who have been tortured because of their faith. It means so very little to us because we have not had to defend our faith. Every one of us in this room is a person of faith. Even if you are not a Christian, even if you consider yourself to be an atheist, you are a person of faith because faith is simply in something larger than ourselves that we define ourselves by. What you have to ask yourself is if you have a life that is defined by something bigger than you that will defend the rights of others smaller than you and people who do not have the same rights as you. I consider it a privilege to speak whenever I've been given the opportunity to be with uh, Bob. I didn't know it would cost me my ability to travel anymore. Now my visa gets denied everywhere I try to go. Uh, but I remembered uh, there were some Chinese people in our congregation, and I realized how serious it was when Bob Fu walked up to me after church, and he said, do you know where those people came from? And I said, China? And he said, I just want to make sure who they are before we are dismissed. So it's a, it's a, a challenge to walk with Bob and those who are with him defending the rights of others, but please understand, if, we, if you are given the opportunity to voice support, you lose very little compared to what these men and their families have lost if you stand up and voice your support. And it's time for us to realize, as Obama said, and many disagree, we do not live in a Christian nation. The reason we don't live in a Christian nation is because our faith has become defined by our nation, rather than our nation defined by our faith. It's time for us to return to that movement of revolution. Bob, is that the time for us to dismiss now? Thank you. Thank you. Um, just want to recognize uh, actually uh, Reverend Peyton and uh, his dear wife Sandy is also in Ole Miss. Thank you so much uh, for your faithful support, and uh, also thank Dana and uh, Julie and uh, all the co-sponsors. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jenna, and I am here for Christian Legal Society. We want to thank you all for coming out. I know it's a late night, and I know it's in the middle of the week, but we very much appreciate your support. Um, on behalf of Christian Legal Society, we would like to thank uh, China Aid Associations and especially uh, Bob Fu over here for, for helping us put on this uh, um, forum for you. Uh, there's a lot of good information here, and uh, he's uh, brought all these speakers you see before you, so many of them have sacrificed so much to come here. Um, there's time, there's distance, not to mention the, the overcoming the government, and even just the, the language barrier is sometimes a challenge in itself. And we very much appreciate them coming here and uh, speaking on the subject. Uh, right now we have a reception um, that is going to be held across the hall in what we call our multipurpose room. Um, you're free to go there. There's food. There's, um, there's going to be drinks power to sort of disappear, torture, uh, and harass. Um, what, am I, what am I doing here? Uh, you don't want to hear from me, you want to hear from them. So uh, I was told from the, uh, from the press release that I had 18 minutes to give a policy speech. Well, I, I won't do that. Um, I'll try to be brief. I want to give an overview of what I do, uh, what I think the U.S. government should do to protect the work uh, and what the people here, potentially in this room, can do uh, to help the work of the human rights lawyers uh, in China. Um, we are sitting at a, a sort of a confluence uh, of several major social movements in China, uh, of which these men here on my right represent. The first is the explosive growth of religion uh, in China, particularly evangelical Protestantism. But Christianity, in general, is growing by leaps and bounds in China, despite what the government's uh, restrictions and uh, uh, obstacles that they place. I mean, Bob said 180 million Protestants. Uh, that may be at the high end. I don't know what the exact number is. But the, the fact of the matter is there are more Protestants in China than there are in the United States right now. 
right? Most of those worship illegally. I mean, in uh, house churches, as they were, or in uh, illegal uh, underground, uh, or a lot of them are above ground uh, religious uh, venues, uh, which are technically illegal. They are harassed, and you can read the commission's report if you want, uh, or the State Department's report on religious freedom, and you can see that they are harassed, their leaders are detained, uh, their property is destroyed and confiscated, uh, their, or just, uh, their church is destroyed as well, because they operate outside of the legal norms that the government uh, sets for them. They are part of this movement where religious faith and the growth of religion meets the rights defense movement. This is a very powerful confluence of power, and it's one that the Chinese government has tried to sort of break apart uh, and to stop. The word peaceful evolution, we talked about this today, peaceful evolution, which the Chinese government uh, is the term the Chinese government uses to describe all those who peacefully, through peaceful means, free speech, religious freedom, human rights advocates, labor advocates, democracy advocates, those are the folks that they see as a threat to the entrenched power of the state. They learn this lesson from Eastern Europe. The Velvet Revolution, where Poland and Czechoslovakia and East Germany right, fell because of the movements of, of things like Charter 77 in Czechoslovakia or the Catholic Church in Poland. Right? The lessons learned from the Chinese government throws in whatever obstacles. Um, he will sustain that, and as will hundreds of others uh, who are part of this movement. The, I mean, Nathan sort of talked this more, uh, right at the beginning of this about you know President Hu Jintao's visit and the question of what should he do about what is the best way of going about dealing with promoting what these men do. Because I think it's an interest, it's in the general interest of the U.S. government not only to promote human rights abroad, but also to promote the rule of law in China. Long term, if there is a protection of human rights in China, if there is a sustained rule of law, that would be better for the U.S.-China relationship. It will bring stability where, uh, you know, sort of prosperity and trade um, and security can be ensured in that relationship. It would it transform a relationship which is one of competitive, you know, strategic competitors at the moment to something different. So how do we do this? My part of my job uh, at the Commission on International Religious Freedom has been for the last couple of years of uh, promoting human rights in China has been a vacillation between quiet diplomacy uh, and public uh, public condemnation between the butchers of Beijing, and our best trade partners in the world. Right. We've moved, sort of, this administration, for example, in the first year, uh, I think, tried to sort of be quiet.